Hello and welcome to another episode of Insurance Insights Podcast presented to you by your favorite brand Policy Bazaar. We host this podcast with our experts every fortnight to help you make the smartest insurance decisions. If you are a first time listener and haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do it right away. Our podcast is also available on Spotify, Google, Apple, Amazon Music, Jio Saavn, Hangama and Wink Music. You can listen to all our previous episodes on these platforms. This episode is to do with one of the most unsung yet one of the most critical figures in a child's life, an average Indian father. Every Father's Day, many of us struggle to find the right gift for our dads. It's frustrating and adorable at the same time that somehow these peculiar creatures called dads never want any gifts per se. And the thing that makes them the happiest is sharing their share of worldly wisdom with their kids and hoping that it sticks. One of the areas where they give invaluable advice is financial investment. It's from them that we learn the very important lessons that while we work hard for our money, we can also be smart and make our money work for us every once in a while. This Father's Day, we decided to give our lovely listeners a refresher on dad recommended investment tips. We have with us today Tarun Mathur who is CBO at Policy Bazaar. Tarun has two beautiful kids and does an amazing job at setting the right examples for them in every aspect of life. Welcome to the podcast Tarun. Thank you. So to start with the first lesson that every father tries to teach their kids is that they should invest for the right reasons. Can you tell our listeners how they can chalk out a clear financial goal for themselves? I think the the best advice one could say is that you know if you have an, a steady income coming in, you apportion anywhere between thirty to thirty five percent to your kids. Now, whether you want to have a separate bucket for uh, for their schooling, for their higher education, and uh, different for their co curricular activities, uh, then that's up to you. But I think uh, it's very uh, uh, it's very prudent to kind of uh, make sure that each of these buckets. Are identified and always remain the same. Uh, do not use these funds for anything else. So the way I look at it, for the higher education, because I'm I'm thinking, let's say, what the inflation will be uh, 17 to 18 years hence when they go to college, and depending on you know what their uh, interests are, are they going into engineering? Are they uh, do they want to go outside and you know for, follow uh, commerce, uh, or do they want to go on the art side? At least those are the branches that we knew when at least I was growing up. Now depending on each of these, if you did a broad uh, you know calculation basis where uh, you know the fees are today or what the uh, you know the expenditure today is uh, these can be these could be you know, you know they, they could be okay or they could be very very large investments so especially if you want them to go outside the country which is becoming quite a norm a lot of these kids uh, so one is not saying that they go outside the country but they do go outside to just study uh, my take here is go for a long term uh, investment insurance plan uh, that does two, uh, two things one is that it tells you exactly how much you uh, stand to gain at the end of 17 18 years uh, your money is secure it's very difficult to kind of take it out whereas if it's in a liquid form let's say it's in a savings account run or a fixed deposit it's very easy to touch that money for anybody right so you go for a long-term investment plan uh, the second advantage of a long-term investment insurance plan is that if something happens to you the premiums already get paid for or get automatically paid for and that makes sure that whether you're there or not there the overall uh, amount that you had set aside or you had kind of wanted as a goal is achieved at the end of 17 to 18 years now comes the plan when you kind to uh, you know educate them right now now their schools schools also vary from anywhere between 1 lakh rupees to about 3 lakh rupees uh, a year in terms of basic education in schools and so it's become very expensive from at least where i study i think the first time i paid the fees for my daughter uh, who's 9 years old today when when she went to preschool the first fee i paid just the first fee was actually higher than the total amount that uh, that my parents spent on my education all through whatever number of years i studied so that's the kind of scale of inflation so for that what I would recommend is that you should invest behind uh, a mutual funds or plans that give you anything which where you invest for let's say five to seven years and you get back in five to seven years so I think those investments are very very important now comes the third bucket where let's say you want to uh, you know have a small pot of gold available to you let's say within seven uh, 14 uh, 21 years depending on uh, you know if somebody picks
picks up let's say tennis or football or cricket because these funds become necessary when they're trying to go to the next level and I'm not talking about the basic infrastructure of you know trying to give them uh, you know a cricket kit or something I'm saying that if they need to kind of go outside the city uh, represent uh, their state their school or whatever it is uh, you need to have some funds available all this I think fixed deposits are great I think mutual funds are great and I think short-term insurance plans are really the best because they, the money keeps growing if you don't utilize it yeah. and it, it stays secure okay so certainly some great tips on how you can set your financial goals right Tarun it is common for people to simply keep money in their savings account because they get confused about the right investment avenues can you please tell our listeners about the top dad approved golden rules of investment which can ensure that once money grows safely and without any regrets Keeping money in a savings account is almost criminal. It's like leaving your car on when you go to buy diapers. So I think uh, that's the worst form of investment. I think what you should be able to do is you do your own research, right? And you be comfortable with whatever investment you make. That's the most important thing. Some people say that you should go for high growth plans, you know, get about 20% uh, rate of interest. Or, uh, you know, some people will tell you, no, 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 keep it very secure, go for five, five and a half percent. I think it's an independent choice, depending on you know, where your security lies. For, a, for, a, for somebody with lesser income, uh, but a steady income, uh, you know, doing well, I would always say go for a high growth plan. And if you look at horizons, right, and uh, uh, people fear that, you know, unit link plans or market link plans are dangerous, they're not. If you picked up any any time in the last 30 years and you looked at any 10 uh, years period, the market's only given you returns. So one does feel that in the short term, your investment might go up or down. But if you look at 10 year horizon, you will see that the market has never failed anyone, right? That, that's the way the economies are growing that even for crashed economies it's not so bad so my my, my take here is don't keep it in the savings account uh, invest your first 10% 20% into a fixed deposit so you have liquidity uh, your next percentile of let's say let's say 30 to 70% put them into insurance plan right uh, but make sure you're investing for both the medium term and the long term short term of course investments you will not make okay. thanks sir, Tarun, for sharing that with the listeners uh, moving on what are the most common misconceptions and mistakes related to investment that a father should warn his kids against uh, there are a lot of these uh, gimmicks and schemes going on right uh, the, my favorite one my favorite one is where somebody walks up to you and say listen are you a Hindu I said yes and they say okay you know what I am actually somebody who understands uh, you know what you call uh, rebirth right they believe in rebirth so you ask me whether you believe in rebirth I said I'm a true Hindu I do believe in rebirth he said I can predict when and where you will be in your next life so you have money in this life but you may be born a pauper the next so why don't you give me your money today right and you give me a check of whatever 15 20 lakh rupees and I will find you when you are reborn and give it to you right um, I, I think uh, from a concept perspective it's brilliant from a believability perspective it is one of the best schemes I've ever heard but I would I would uh, uh, you know implore you to uh, actually see the facts behind it and not invest there I think the right right the, the right ones the right investments they may sound boring but they are always within your insurance plans, your fixed deposits and your mutual funds. Well, I'm sure this will help our listeners plan their investment better. My next question is, there are some age-old investment plans that people swear by, which may not be the best idea for millennial dads. What would be your advice to them? Now, I don't mean to make this uh, a serious subject, but uh, I think protection is extremely underserved in our country. I think dads of today have to realize and recognize and be able to talk about death just the way it is. It's a sad thing to talk about, but it's happening. Now, if you're earning, let us say, 50,000 rupees a month, that's going to your family, and you stopped existing tomorrow, and let's say you have a saving of 10 lakh rupees, how long does your family last on that 10 lakh rupees? We said it's 50,000 a month, right? That makes it 6 lakh rupees have been spent in one year. Um, so basically what you have is one and a half years, you know, simply put, right? What after that? Are you going to leave your family with debt, with stress? Are your kids going to change their schools? Will they start going to public school just because you don't exist? Will your wife have to run from uh, one pillar to post just to take care of the family? I don't think that it's uh, anywhere taboo to talk about debt. I don't think that we're doing enough to cover. You have kids, you have responsibility. If you didn't want the responsibility, don't become a dad. It's very simple. But now that you're there, invest in protection plans. Make sure that if you die, 
your family has some assets to go for it's all right it, it's great if you lose that money this is the kind of money i want to lose because i want to survive i want to be with them i want them to i want to see them grow up i want to be there for my daughter's marriage i want to be there for her graduation i want to be for my son's graduation if he actually makes it to college of course but if you're not thinking about what happens when you're not there you're not really thinking so my first 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 request is go protect your family buy a protection plan investment hoti rahegi agar aap zinda rahoge lekin agar aap zinda nahi rahoge to fir aapki family kya hoga that's it thank you thanks sarun for sharing that with the listeners um, lastly can you please share with our listeners an investment tip that your father taught you is there any updated version of this tip that you will be teaching your kids even without all the memes uh, that exist today i think my dad got hold of one advice which i think originates from warren buffet and he said you have to save before you spend and not spend before you save i think that resonates very well i am a spendthrift but it's true that uh, you know in in my in my first formative years when i started working i wouldn't save anything and uh, it took a large accident to actually make me realize uh, you know what happens when you don't have money and i think it's very important that everybody follows this right you have whatever income you have you have 10000 rupees of income or 20000 rupees of income uh, stop eyeing that iphone uh, you know you can go for any other phone it works the same way you'll still get your means on your phone you'll still be able to chat uh, but it's far more important that you have a set of money set aside every single month that you are able to use for your family as years progress it may seem very less in the beginning and it may seem like it's not fulfilling any goal but please remember your income will keep going up so it's very important when i talk to my daughter i tell her the same thing i tell my i, I can't tell my son much uh, you know he, he, he's almost still in his nappies uh, but but from my daughter's perspective you know she loves all the bells and whistles she likes her you know uh, she likes her bike with the little frills inside uh, she likes her uh, uh, what do you call the doll houses right and she likes her dolls and all that but sometimes when she's asking for toys and i tell her listen the first thing i must do when my salary comes in and i tell her that is that i need to keep so much money aside so that when you grow up you have more so uh, and i know that she's still imagining a much larger doll uh, uh, i know that's what the money is for it's for her but i think that if i inculcate this within her she will kind of follow it all her life so when uh, you know we started giving her pocket money very recently so and and i'm very very happy to see that she does take uh, you know a small amount is only 30 rupees which she keeps in a small little gulak uh, which i must I, i haven't told her that her uh, her brother is actually opening it and taking the money out but she believes that you know today she has uh, about 300 uh, rupees you know, st- uh, you know stored up in there but i think that's the best advice i think that's if they can start at a very very young age see you don't need that money but it will it will give them uh, aadat ban jayegi theek hai where they'll start saving and they'll start recognizing so she enjoys the fact that she has 300 rupees uh, you know and and if if that becomes fun and uh, you put a bonus on top of it like if you save so much in a year i will give you 10 rupees extra i think that's the kind of habits that you must inculcate so with that i think i think i think that's my advice thank you for these on point lessons tarun we are sure that all kids and dads out there are very thankful to you for all these tips with this we have come to the end of our today's podcast please don't forget to like share and subscribe stay safe stay well and see you again